Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We ask that your spirit to teach us even at this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome you as we continue on our series on Lord, Teach Me to Pray. And uh, in the first series and also the second, we looked at Jesus Christ, you know, teaching his disciples how to pray at the request of the disciples in Luke chapter 11, you know, verse 1, and also Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. Specifically, we looked at that Jesus said unto them that when you pray, say, Our Father, and that you must have a relationship with the Father before you can truly pray. And also that you must recognize God and know him as your Father before you can pray effectively. Amen. Today, we're going to begin looking at the second aspect, which we have titled, Who Art in Heaven. Amen. Praise God. And so when Jesus said, when you pray, say our Father, he didn't stop at that level. He qualified it, you know, by basically depicting the kind of Father that he's talking about. He says, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Now, you need to understand, of course, as a believer, that God lives in you. But Jesus didn't say, our Father who lives in you. Instead, he says, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Again, as I said, as a child of God, once you give your life to Christ, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, also, and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says that ye have become the temple of the living God. So it is true that God dwells in you as a believer. But when Jesus say, when ye pray, say our Father, he didn't refer to the fact that you should be praying to the Father that is inside of you, though he recognizes that God lives in you. But he says, our Father, who art in heaven. And obviously when Jesus says, our Father who art in heaven, he's talking about the God who lives in the heavens. And anyone who dwells in the heavens is greater than the one you know who dwells on the earth itself. Amen. Anyone who is in the heavens is above the person who is on the earth. And anything that relates to the heavens, you're talking about the supernatural. And so Jesus is talking about you having faith in the supernatural before you can pray effectively. Amen. Because you are actually approaching a God, you know, who lives in the supernatural because he is supernatural himself. And you will see that through the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever he prays, the Bible says, and he looked unto heaven. Why did he look on the earth? After all, God is everywhere. But it was to teach us a lesson that you are praying to the God who lives in the heaven. Praise God. And so you must have faith in the supernatural for you to be able to pray effectively. Your faith must be in the God who not only is here, but whose glory fills the entire universe. The primary dwelling place of God is in the heavens. And you see that, you know, depicted, you know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22 to 24, where it talks about the heavenly Jerusalem, Mount Zion, and to the innumerable company of angels, you know, and the dwelling place of these angels is in the heavens. Amen. So Jesus is saying, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. Now, I want us to also take a different look at the subject of our Father who dwells in heaven. Now, what you're going to hear might sound a little bit esoteric, but I want you to grant me your audience so that you'll be able to follow me clearly and be able, you know, to absorb that which I want you to get even from today's, today's teaching. Because I believe that what I'm going to say is going to revolutionize your prayer life. You begin to see prayer in a different dimension. And of course, when it revolutionizes your prayer life, then it means that you're going to appropriate, you know, more answers to your prayers. And then you will find it interesting praying, even as the Lord Jesus Christ prays. Amen. Praise God. Now, all religions in the world identify God as God. Whether, and this is irrespective of whether you are a Christian or not. God is the creator of the entire universe. And therefore, any religion that you mention, they all believe that God is God. And they pray to God as God. And you see this in the Old Testament. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, and every one of them believe that God is God. Why? Because God created all things. And so whether they believe it or not, God is their God. God is their God in the sense that they owe their existence, they owe their creation, even to him as God. Amen. But one of the things that accounted for the effectiveness, you know, of the prayers of the Lord Jesus Christ is that he didn't just see God as God. 
He saw God as Father. And this is the revolutionary thinking, you know, that Jesus Christ brought into prayers of the sons of men. In fact, when Jesus came on the earth, the purpose of his coming is to reveal God to man as Father. And so as far as the believer is concerned, God is not just your God. Beyond that, God is your Father. And so if you get to pray effectively, you must come to the consciousness, you must come to the identification of the fact that God is not just your God, he is your Father. Amen. And the Jews understood the importance of this. In fact, they couldn't take it in. And that is why in John chapter 6, they wanted to stone Jesus because he identified God as his Father. And Jesus asked them, why do you want to stone me? And they said, because you make God your Father. They didn't want to stone Jesus because he, because he identified God as his God. No. They wanted to stone Jesus because he identified God as his father and they knew what it meant. If you're going to pray effectively, you must come to the knowledge and to the identification of the fact that God is not only your God, God is your father. Praise God. Now, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the Old Testament, they prayed to God as God because they knew him as God. They didn't know him as father. Elijah also prayed to God as God because he didn't know him as father. But Jesus Christ came to reveal God to us as father. And the manner in which you relate to God is also going to determine how you pray to him. If you identify and relate to God as God, then you are also going to pray to him as God. But because Jesus in his earthly ministry recognized and identified with God as father, he prayed unto him as father and therefore was able to obtain you know, answers to his prayers. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me read to you John chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. They had no issues with Jesus addressing God as God, but they had all issues with Jesus addressing God as his father. And so until you come to an understanding and to developing a work with God as Father, your prayer life is going to be dwarf. You're not going to be experiencing answers to the prayers. And the spiritual life is going to be very frustrating to you. I must tell you, there is nothing as frustrating as praying and not receiving answers to one prayers. And you're likely to experience that if you do not come to the understanding and to appreciate the fact that God is your Father. He is not just God to you. He might be God to the entire world, but beyond him being God to you, God is primarily your father. Amen. Praise God. Now, now, being born again, you know, as a son of God does not imply that you come to understand and to appreciate God as your father. There are many Christians who see God as God, but they do not identify with God as their father. In fact, as I said, if you look at the Old Testament, God was presented to them as God. And because he was presented to them as God, they feared God, they saw God as being so dreadful, they saw God as someone not to move close to, they saw God as someone to be far away from. But when Jesus Christ came and introduced God as a loving father, what, God, what Jesus did was to draw us close unto God so that we can identify you know, God as our father. And that brings a loving kind of relationship. And then we, 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 we have faith in the fact that even as we cry unto God as our father, he is able to hear us. As I close this subject, how do you see God? Who is God to you? Do you see him just as God? Or you have come to embrace God as our father? Jesus came into this world to introduce to man the fatherhood of God. God is not only your God, is your God by creation, but by redemption, God is your father. And when you come into a loving relationship with him as father, then you can trust God that they will answer your prayers even as you pray unto him. Jesus said, when ye pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. God dwells in the heaven and we have a loving relationship with him. He is supernatural. It is by faith that we see him. It is by faith based upon the blood of Jesus that we relate even unto him. When you see God as your Father who dwells in the heaven, and pray on the basis of that relationship, then your prayers will be answered. 
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this subject. We ask, Lord, that you open our eyes to understand and to know God and to relate with him as our Father. And as we pray unto you, O God, we ask, Lord, that you will hear us. In Jesus' name, amen.